This is a video comparing the Bergwarner S300G turbo that came off of my 330 horsepower Caterpillar 3126B uh, with a new S300 SXE turbo um, considered an S363. Uh, originally when I recorded this video it was going to be part of a broader video on the installation on the engine but I thought as I was editing it that it actually stood alone better as a video comparing the differences between the tur two turbos, so hope you enjoy. Alright, my new turbo just arrived and I'm pretty excited about that. I wanted to do a little comparison, just put the two next to each other as I was uh, checking them out, make sure everything looks like it should be able to bolt up, and uh, see, hopefully catch any issues before I install it. And so far everything's looking good, um, but I want to point out just a few things that I'm going to have to do uh, as well as a couple of differences between these turbos. So turbo on the left, this is the uh, turbo that came out of my bus. This is a Bergwarner S300G. Um, very popular common turbo. And on the right, this is also a Bergwarner turbo. It is an S300 SXE. And that's the newest version uh, of this turbo, they've done a lot of evolution over the years, um, made it better. This turbo is about 5% more efficient than the old one at all points. Um, what that should mean is that it should be able to flow air without heating it up quite as much. Um, this is also a slightly larger turbo. Uh, I was doing this on purpose to try to also help make it a bit more efficient at the higher end uh, because this uh, this bus spends a lot of time on the highway and at the higher power settings where I'm typically running um, I think this was it was getting a bit outside of the map of the old turbo uh, with that said it is mostly a bolt-on not a hundred percent and there are a few differences over the years so first and most obvious thing uh, that you note is that the pressure reference port for the wastegate uh, actuator is in a different location. Um, that doesn't really impact anything, it's just where they put it. Theoretically, the pressure in that whole outside uh, area should be the same, roughly. Over here, uh, this, is, this is the biggest difference between the new turbo and the old turbo uh, externally. And what this port is, is a, a turbo speed sensor port. Um, this turbo and this series of turbos is uh, aimed at the aftermarket, so people who are doing things that, uh, kind of like what I'm doing, where they're putting a, a new turbo on, and unlike the OEMs that go through a whole lot of effort to determine uh, what speed the turbo is spinning at for all different reference points and make sure it doesn't overspeed, um, we're not necessarily doing that or we don't have that data. So they put this port in that you can put in a speed sensor, which is really just a Hall effect sensor, just a little, uh, or just a little magnetic pickup, um, similar to a crank sensor or anything like that. And as you spin the blades, it will catch the blade going by the sensor, and you can get turbo speed from there. Um, but uh, important thing to note is that they machine for this, but they do not drill the whole way through. There's about a quarter inch of metal that is in here. So if you were going to use this, you would want to take the compressor housing off the turbo, drill it through the hallway, make sure it was all clean, then put it back on, and then you could put a sensor in. Uh, that's really convenient for me because I don't want to put a speed sensor on this. It would be kind of nifty to have, but uh, it's about $200 for the kit, and I don't feel like doing that. Just looking at the uh, compressor wheel, you can see obviously that uh, one looks old and one looks new. Um, they're both seven blades. Probably the most important difference between the new and the old compressor wheels is that the new ones are forged milled wheels as opposed to cast, which makes them more precise and should make them more efficient, better flowing all around. Uh, you can see that the new one is about, I think it's about four millimeters bigger um, than the old one, so a little bit bigger on the turbo side or on the compressor side. Um, one thing that I didn't notice at first uh, until I started playing around with measuring things is 
just looking at the uh, compressor inlet. So this is the same diameter on both the new and the old turbo, but if you look closely, you'll see that this one is actually machined higher um, than this one over here. Uh, in fact, the whole turbo is about half an inch taller uh, if you have it uh, on a level surface like this. So what that means is that uh, my uh, inlet hose uh, is going to be pushed a little, about half an inch further you know, rear on the bus, forward on the engine, which puts it closer to the alternator that's there. Um, that's good to know because it was getting close to one of the bolts, uh, so I may have to trim the bolt a little bit just to make sure that I have enough space for it. But this isn't going to be a big deal uh, for me to work with, nothing, nothing I'm concerned about. If you look at the outlets here, this is actually the one thing that is significantly different between the two, enough that I'm going to have to um, do something different. Uh, this is probably my fault. I should have specified the how I had the outlet on the turbo because AGP uh, went and machined this for a standard for a, a standard uh, outlet. But this is actually uh, several millimeters smaller diameter than this. Um, we can even measure it. The inside diameter is the same, but if we look at the outside diameter, hard to do one-handed but we can call this, call that about 78 millimeters and yeah that's not the same at all. This is about 65 millimeters um, but again the inside diameter is basically the same. So I'm gonna have to get some kind of uh, different coupling to put on here to connect it to the rest of the piping. Uh, that's no big deal, so that's that's a simple thing to do. Uh, let's move over to the exhaust side of things. So one thing to, to note when you buy a universal turbo, or one that's not purposely fit for the application, is that the orientation of the turbine and the compressor housings is probably not going to be where you need it to be. And even if you buy one that's specific for your application, you should check to make sure that it is. Um, you can see over here, so here's the turbo inlet flange that attaches to the exhaust manifold. And then this here is the uh, oil supply inlet that comes from the engine. So these bolts that hold the turbine housing onto the core uh, you can loosen them and you can rotate it to get the orientation where you need it. So by comparison, this flange here and this oil inlet is at about 90 degrees off of where it needs to be. So again, not a big deal. Um, all, I, all I'll have to do is loosen the bolts and that'll be just fine. The turbo inlet, both of them are T3 divided flanges, uh, so that part is... Uh, what I was looking for, um, so that's good. And then uh, similar wastegate housing, it looks like not a whole lot has changed between the two um, over the years. The turbine side is a little bit different. So the first thing uh, that I noticed between the two is that uh, the number of blades is different. The old turbo has an 11 blade turbine and the new turbo has a 10 blade turbine. Um, I believe that these are both supposed to be 76 millimeter turbines, um, but it does look like the AR is different on them. Um, I had thought that this was a 0.8 AR, uh, and this one is a 0.8 AR, that is what I had ordered. But as you can see, the exhaust outlet is significantly larger on this new one. Um, I'm not upset about that at all. I think that should reduce restriction and hopefully lower EGTs make everything work a little bit more efficiently. Um, the theory was that this new turbo should be similar in lag, maybe a little bit less lag just because it's new, it's a better design, all of that, um, but ultimately be more efficient. That was really my bigger goal, and it should theoretically produce more boost for the same exhaust for the same fuel flow, um, which should lower EGTs. Uh, that's assuming everything got sized right. 
So, um, as far as the exhaust outlet flange, uh, these are the same dimensions. This one has this little extra lip on it um, that the old one does not, but that actually looking at it, now that there's this, this just has the extra lip, that won't be a problem. Uh, that'll seal just fine with the V-band clamp. So no concerns there. Um, obviously, I have not transferred over the oil drain uh, tube from the old turbo. And while the new turbo did come with a wastegate actuator, uh, they ship it without it attached. So I'm going to need to attach that. But I'll just pull it out of the box here. You can see uh, all shiny and new. Um, and when I ordered this, they said that this was adjustable. And honestly, I am not sure how to adjust this. I don't see an easy set screw, but there might be something that I'm missing, so I gotta look into that a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with this. This looks good. Um, it looks like the only, the only custom thing, the only things I'm gonna have to do as far as basic changes go uh, versus the old setup are that um, I'm gonna have to do something about this compressor outlet coupling, like I said. And then the other thing is that on the turbo supply side, you can see the old turbo, uh, this had two bolts uh, and there was a flange that went on here. Uh, this is actually threaded. So what I'm, what I'm gonna end up having to do is uh, get, a, get some kind of new hose or something made up that will go from the turbo inlet to the engine. So I'm not gonna worry about that until after I put the thing on, but uh, looks good and I will, get to putting this thing on the engine.